Yes, we're back again. This is 300 plus academy with the beautiful subject of chemistry. I hope it leaves you peaceful at the end of, you know, today's class. So uh, what we're going to be looking today is alternative to practical GCE in uh, chemistry, talking about titration or volumetric analysis. I am Adeyemi Abiodun, your lead tutor at 300 plus.com so let's get right into it don't forget like subscribe turn on the notification bell and of course comment and of course do not forget to uh visit or check us out on our website at 300 plus academy.com where you can link up with uh fellow scholars like you are uh, preparing for exams and you can get to really really uh, get the best out of your preparation so that you ace your next exam. So let's get right into it. Uh, what we have for you in the question displaying on your screen, it's a titration question, which of course is a probable question for your GC exam in chemistry or alternative to practical. It's about a titration uh, between HCl, dilute hydrochloric acid, and uh, sodium bicarbonate, that's sodium chalcium carbonate uh, 4 we were given a table as you can see on your screen and the first question that comes in is that we should identify three errors in the readings of this titration table of course when you look at that table uh, we have the rough uh, titration and then we have the first titration we have the second titration and we have the third titration so question a1 we we're told to identify three errors in the reading now looking at that table first if you look through very well there was no unit the unit is supposed to be in cm cube centimeter cube so we have no reading so the first error i can see in that table is that we have no unit the second error i can see in that table is what we call arithmetic error arithmetic error in the sense that we were trying to subtract the final Barrett reading from the initial Barrett reading. And if you look at the rough titration, 24.60 take away 0, 0.00, and we got 24.0. Of course, that is an error. So we have arithmetic error as the second error. Another error I can uh, see from this table is what we call inconsistent Barrett reading with respect to decimal point. If you look at the rough titration, 24.60 is to uh, two decimal place, 0, 0.00 to two decimal place, but 24.0 is to one decimal place. So that is very inconsistent. You want to check through the first titration as well. Uh, we have some to one decimal place and some to two decimal places. So that is very inconsistent so there we have inconsistent breadth reading with respect to decimal point and then another thing is uh, for a titration table we are meant to always leave our answers to three significant figures if you look at the third titration we have 23.45 that is not to three significant figures but to four significant figures so not leaving answers in three significant figure is another error we we'll leave that to question A2. We were told to write an equation for this reaction, for this titration reaction. Recall, uh, if you check, if you see, if you look at your screen now, you see it's a titration between HCl and sodium chalcium carbonate four. So what you have here is HCl reacting with sodium chalcium carbonate four. Okay, let me take uh, this out so that you see the reason why I am balancing things the way I am uh, doing now. I have ACL reacting with sodium triazocarbonate 4. Normally, sodium is to combine with the uh, chlorine there because of course it's a neutralization reaction. So I'm thinking, okay, for neutralization reaction, salt and water is normally supposed to be formed. So I'll look at the metallic ion that I have in my base, which is bicarbonate here. And then I'm going to look at the anions I have in my acid so when i try to combine sodium with chlorine a single sodium ion will go for a single uh chlorine ion so i don't want chlorine here i'll have to put two here so 
that uh, two sodium can go with two chlorine so that is out of it so i'm left with hydrogen and i'm left with uh, carbonate most times whenever uh an acid uh react with a carbonate always know that there is the possibility of carbon peroxide being liberated from the carbonate you see there is a possibility of carbon peroxide being liberated so if i have carbon peroxide co2 from co3 then i'm going to have one oxygen left which can then combine with hydrogen to give me water so this is a balanced equation for that reaction then uh for question b we were told to calculate the average volume of acid use va if you look at that table the first titration and the second titration looks very consistent although the second uh, titration uh there are some inconsistencies in terms of uh, the decimal uh a point but that notwithstanding 23.50 and 23.5 for the first titration as you can see on your screen and the second titration looks consistent or concordant so we we'll talk of looking for the average or our title value here so which is still going to give me 23.50 which gives me 23.50 cm cube that's the average volume of acid used okay now for question um b we were told to calculate okay this is b1 now for b2 we're told to calculate the concentration of acid in mole per dm cube so which means ca in mole per dm cube is my question and uh, of course va here is the average title value the average volume of acid use that's 23.50 cm cube and of course when you look at your uh, number of moles of acid from the equation it is actually two so which means if you did not get the right equation here then you're going to have a problem dealing with b2 because the na will not be consistent okay for my cb from the question you can see that i've been given 0.05 mole 0.05 mole per dm cube and that is my standard solution you know in titration what we do is this we will be given one solution of known concentration which we call a standard solution and then we will have to use that to decode or to calculate the concentration of the other solution so which means this year is a standard solution this year we don't know the concentration so it is not a standard solution so what we do in titration is to use a standard solution to standardize another solution in this case my base which is sodium carbonate is the standard solution and from the question i was told that the volume of my base uh, which represent the volume of my pipette is 25.00 cm cube and then from the equation the number of moles of the base is one so using the normal formula cava divided by cbvb equals to n a over n b since i am trying to calculate the c a this should move here so that c a i'll be left with n a c b v b i'm going to be left with n b here then my v a is going to come here so i have v a here so that what that means is my n a is 2 my c b is 0 0.05 and of course my vb is 25 all divided by my nb is 1 and my va is 23.50 this i'm going to compute to get my answer so computing that that is going to give me 0 0.10 cc mole per dm cube when you see a capital letter m like this it talks about mole per dm cube but of course we can write it as 0 0.106 mole per mole per dm cube and you'll be correct so that is that on question b2 so we're through with that so 
for question C, as you can see on your screen, we were told to mention two precautions that must be taken in the use of the bread. Now, for the bread in this experiment, we are to fill the bread with the acid uh, for this titration. So before you fill your bread with acid normally, the normal procedure you take in the laboratory is to rinse the bread with distilled water and then you rinse with the acid solution to be used for the titration. You, you, you put in the distilled water, you run it out, then you put in uh, the acid solution, you run it out as well before you then ultimately fill with the acid you are to use for the titration. So the very first precaution to be taken in the use of the bread is to rinse with water and then acid solution. Another thing is to ensure that the bread is clamped vertically so as to avoid error of parallax. You look at the uh, bread horizontally at the mark, but if the bread is slanting, then there is going to be an error of judgment and then you are not going to get a precise uh, a volume of acid. Okay. Another uh, precaution to take is after filling, uh, you, you, when you want to fill your acid into the bread, you use a funnel. You don't directly fill the acid into the bread from the uh, conical flask. You use a bread to fill that in. So you re and after you must have done that, you remove the funnel from the bread before you carry out your titration. Another thing is this correct uh, level of meniscus, correct meniscus uh, level. You look at the lower meniscus. This is not in a bread. This is not where you look. This is where you look. This is the correct level. So you look at the lower meniscus. So correct meniscus level must be ensured. Okay, that is that on C Roman figure one. On C Roman figure two, we were asked another question. We say says state the reason why a base is not usually put into the bread during titration. It's very simple. One of the features of a base is that it has a soapy feel. It has a soapy feel. And uh, most time when you use soap, you see scums, white fall like uh, substances being formed on the uh, side. So when you look at why we don't put a base into uh, a bread, one of the reasons is that the base has the ability to react although slowly with the glass and when that happens it clogs up the jet of the bread that's the jet around the uh uh end of the uh bread it clogs it up so making it impossible for you to run in your acid subsequently so base has the tendency to react with the fragile glass of the bread clogging it or blocking it up so that is why we usually don't put a base into a bread now to uh, question c3 we have been asked another question and it says uh, give um, the reason why more than one reading is taken during titration very simple it is to obtain consistent or concordant title value and a consistent or concordant title value is a plus or minus 0 0.20 uh, cm cube so that we get values that is uh, actually consistent with what every other person has for that uh, experiment. So that ends question C. For question D, we have another question that states, state the color of methyl orange in the following solution. Of course, methyl orange is an indicator so what is the color of methyl orange in sodium hydrogen trouser carbonate ordinarily sodium hydrogen trouser carbonate is an acid salt uh, sodium hydrogen trouser carbonate normally must have been formed from combination of okay this must be sodium hydroxide this is more of an acid salt sodium must have come from sodium hydroxide which is a strong alkali and uh, HCO3 must have come from the weak acid hydrogen trouser carbonate 4. In this reaction what must have happened is that we have limited 
supply of sodium hydroxide. Now, the implication of that is uh, sodium is going to try to take the place of hydrogen, but because it is not enough, so what we're going to have is sodium displacing one of the replaceable hydrogen ion, but leaving behind one hydrogen ion. And um, of course, that hydrogen will combine with uh, hydrozeal to form water. So you can see this. So what do we have here? Sodium hydroxide reacting with this because we have limited supply of this. We have limited supply of this. We have limited supply of this. So basically what I'm trying to say is that because of this hydrogen here, if I am to put methyl orange into this, the color that this will give me because of the hydrogen ion there, which represents an acid, is a faint red color. A faint red color. I'm going to have a faint red color for... I'm going to have a faint red color for that. I'm going to have a faint red color. That is the color of methyl orange in sodium hydrogen trials or carbonate. Then uh, for D2, this is for D1. For D2, okay, um, in dilute ACL, of course, that's an acid. Dilute ACL, the color of methyl orange is going to be red. And then thirdly, for potassium chloride, KCl, that is a salt, a neutral salt. This is neutral. So the color of methyl orange, okay, like this uh, potassium chloride. Now, this is definitely going to be a reaction between potassium hydroxide and uh, ACL. This is a strong alkali. This is a strong acid. So what I'm going to have is KCl in a neutralization reaction. And of course, water also uh, produce salt and water. So this is neutral. So in a neutral uh, solution, my methyl orange is going to give me pink. In a neutral solution, that's D3 uh, for KCl. It is going to be a pink color. Pink color. That will be the color of my methyl orange in uh, uh, this uh, compound. That ends question D. Now to question E. Okay, that ends question D. Now move to question E. Question E states, state the reason why phenolphthalein cannot be used to distinguish between solutions in D2. Of course, what we have in D2, D2 talks about, uh, D2 talks about dilute ACL. So we want to look at what phenolphthalein what will be the color of phenolphthalein for this? And then D3 talks about um, KCl, potassium chloride. So what will be the color of phenolphthalein in um, this? It says, state the reason why phenolphthalein cannot be used to this. Of course, phenolphthalein in an acid is colorless. And also in a B, in a potassium chloride, it is also colorless. Yes, in an acid, phenolphthalein is colorless. In a neutral salt, phenolphthalein is also colorless. So, it simply means since it gives the same color in D3, in D2, dilute HCl, and in D3, potassium chloride, that cannot distinguish uh, the two. So, with that, we've been able to answer that question, and you can see from this uh, question that it is not at all time that... Uh, everything on the very first question you have in your alternative to practical deals with calculations and calculations no it is very possible that you're just being asked we only had one calculation in the whole of this question so that is for folks thinking oh i only need to memorize ca va over cbvb equals to na over and this one is making me a smile here <laughs> so, it is not every time you deal with calculations, but you need to know uh, the principles behind some of those things. Things like uh, indicators, things about what titration in itself is all about. That you're going to see 
in the next uh, content that we are going to drop at uh, 300 uh, plus. We're going to talk about indicators. We're going to talk about equations. We're going to talk about the uh, tools, the apparatus you need. We're going to talk about everything you need to know. And also, we are going to deal with the uh, all of the calculation, talking about molarity in mole per dm cube, in gram per dm cube. All you need to do is like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and uh, all this, you're going to have it. Thank you.